I'm going to do a demonstration about buffers. Buffers are more of an advanced topic in your acid-base curriculum, but one of the things that that topic allows you to do is really integrate your understanding of acids and bases. So, you know, if you truly understand buffers, then you understand everything there is to know about acid-base chemistry, which is great. Of course, if you don't understand buffers, then you don't. But we won't go there because we're going to explain it so that you do understand it. All right, first of all, we're going to make the buffer. A buffer is always composed of the same thing, a weak acid and its conjugate base. And so we abbreviate that, HA for the acid, a weak acid, not a strong acid, a weak acid HA and its conjugate base A minus, makes it easy. So in this case, our weak acid is going to be sodium phosphate monobasic. And the part that's the weak acid there is H2PO4 minus. And I want equal amounts of the acid, the weak acid, and its conjugate base. So in this case, I want about two, I want 200 milliliters of each. Obviously, if you were going to do this analytically, it would be important to measure these with a graduated cylinder and so on to get exactly 200 milliliters of each. And we would do it that way if we were going to do it. But let's just mix about equal amounts of that. I'm going to go a little bit just to add a little bit more in there. So 200 milliliters of the weak acid. We said the weak acid was H2PO4 minus. Its conjugate base is HPO4 2 minus. Don't worry, we'll draw these structures on the board because I know you want them. Okay, so we're going to have, we have 200 milliliters of the weak acid. We're going to add 200 milliliters of its weak base, which is the sodium phosphate dibasic, Na2HPO4. And again, I'm going to go here, that was 200, so I'm going to go to 400 milliliters with this. One of the properties of the buffers is that as long as you have both components present, you're still going to have the buffering action. Now, we may not have the ideal buffer, if, which we would have from these two if we mix them in exactly equal amounts, but that's okay. We're still going to demonstrate the principle. So I've got equal amounts of the weak acid and its conjugate base, and I certainly want to mix that really well. Erlenmeyer flask makes it easy to swirl that. You can put it on a magnetic stirrer. But I want to get, make sure that those are well mixed. I'm going to stir that just a bit more. You could pre-mix that, but I think it helps students. You know, sometimes if you have everything pre-mixed, pre-measured, pre-poured, and so on, then your students don't really know what you're mixing. So we'll go ahead and, and make sure that that's well stirred. Okay. Now a buffer, the definition of a buffer, is that it can... Uh, withstand the addition of small amounts, and we'll see how much, of excess strong acid or strong base without changing the pH. What we're going to do is I've got two sets of beakers here. I'm going to put distilled water in beakers one and three, um, and so I'm going to do about 200 milliliters because I'm going to use 200 milliliters of my buffer then. Okay. What I'm going to do, first of all, is look at the effect of adding strong acid, and then I'm going to look at the effect of adding strong base. So let's focus on one and two right now. Again, distilled water, and I want to add my buffer that I've just made to beaker two. And again, I want equal amounts, just so it looks like I'm not comparing two different things. and about 200 milliliters of that, okay. Now, I want to look at the effect of acid and base on the pH, and so I need some way of seeing the pH of those, so that one actually I'm going to need here. So what I want to do is add some indicator, and I'm adding bromothymol blue indicator to the distilled water and to that, and the distilled water, the um, bromothymol blue is an acid base indicator. It's yellow in acid solution below pH 6. It's blue in basic solution above pH 7.6. I'm 
gonna add just a little bit more to each just so that I get a nice deep green color. Now, I'm not exactly the same. This is um, bromothymol blue, as we said. So this is actually slightly acidic already. So I'm just gonna add not even a drop. Uh, I don't even know whether I can do this so that it'll turn green instead of blue. No, that made it blue. <laughs> Should never try to do things on the fly. All right, you know what? Um, we're going to spill that out. Well, actually, no, we're not. That, that's green. They're not the same shade of green. We're going to go with that. They're both green. Uh, they're a little bit slightly different shades of green, and that's just a very slightly different pH. But bromothymol blue, it's green basically in the neutral range, pH 6.0 to 7.6. Okay, so those are both neutral. And actually, if you just, you know, sometimes patients is important because now they're exactly the same shade of green, aren't they? Okay, so we have two solutions based on the indicator, almost exactly the same pH. And what do we want to see? We want to see whether it can take either excess strong acid or strong base and not change the pH. So I have in my first graduated cylinder here, I have one molar hydrochloric acid, okay? Remember, we said that this is indicator is yellow and acid, blue and base, and green when it's neutral. And it's neutral right now. So I'm going to take and I'm going to add basically a drop of one molar HCl to the water. Remember, this was distilled water plus the indicator. I add one drop. Let's go ahead and stir that. One drop of acid to distilled water with the indicator, an immediate color change to yellow. So clearly the pH has immediately dropped even with one drop of HCl added to it. That's distilled water. So what should the buffer do? The buffer, we should be able to add HCl and the pH should not change. Now how are we going to tell if the pH changes? And I'm going to add rather than one drop because, well, let's go ahead and add one drop just to see that if you add one drop, it's still green, nothing happened, right? So we, we wanna be sure that we're seeing the same thing. Okay, so clearly one drop wasn't gonna do it. Let's do it one milliliter at a time. One molar HCl to my buffer. One milliliter of HCl, we'll stir it, it's still green. Let's add another two mil, second milliliter of HCl, still green. Let's add three milliliters of HCl. And I'm always putting this to about the same level in here so that I can see. Might be changing a little, but it still looks green to me, huh? A little frustrating, hmm. I started with 25 milliliters of acid in here. I'm gonna go down now. I'm gonna add two more milliliters. So now I've added a total of five milliliters of acid. And I'm keeping track because I started at 25, and remember, I only took a drop here, so that doesn't count. It's still green. It's still neutral. What does the buffer do? Well, let's, let's add, that was, well, let's go ahead. Let's add about three milliliters here. Let's see if I just fill that. That's actually exactly three milliliters. Amazing. Oh, looks like a small, still green. A little frustrating. Hmm. Okay. Let's see, well, we'll do another three. Let's take this down to, it goes down to 14. So this will be 11 milliliters total of acid. I see when I first add it, do you see the yellow color? So it looks like it's trying to. And it's certainly, I think probably if you had a before and after, you would say it's a little bit lighter. Remember, it's yellow to, to blue. It's green in the intermediate range, but it's going to be various shades of green as you go from 6.0 to 7.6, which is its transition range of that indicator. So I think you'd probably say, well, the pH has changed, but it certainly hasn't dropped to where this one has. Okay, so how much do we have to add to this? Well, I'm getting a little impatient here. So let's see, we're at 14 now. Let's see if I can uh, eyeball this and get to 10. Oh, I went overshot it a little bit. That's okay. Oh, there we went. All right, so this has eight milliliters left, actually 7.6, something like that. So I added 25 minus nine, I'm gonna make the math easier for me, which is 16 milliliters. So in order to get the same yellow color, 
clearly we can add a lot of acid, the pH doesn't change. Eventually you do overwhelm what's called the capacity of the buffer and then the pH does drop. And we're going to relate that to the composition of that buffer. Let's leave that here. Um, we've got distilled water in beaker three. I'm going to add the rest of my buffer to beaker four there because we said that uh, I need the bromothymol blue. We said that this could take excess strong acid or strong base, so next I'm going to add some sodium hydroxide. But first I want to get my color, and now my, they're both green there. This time I'm not going to be impatient. I'll just say that they're both green. Remember, in this case, the distilled water was in three, and the uh, buffer was in four. And that's just slightly yellow. And so I added, I think, a, not even a drop of sodium hydroxide, which I actually have right here. I'm just going to do that. Patience, though, right? Because last time it went green. I just want to be sure that I'm starting at the same pH. And so I want them, they're, they're not going to be identical shades of green. You could do that. But again, I have two neutral solutions. Water was in three, the buffer was in four. They're both green to begin with, which is the, the, the neutral color for that. Okay, now, now I'm going to add sodium hydroxide. And again, I've filled my, uh, my graduated cylinder here with 25 milliliters of um, sodium hydroxide, one molar. So try to do apples and apples here, not apples and oranges. And I've got distilled water in three, and so I'm just going to add one drop of sodium hydroxide, one drop, and immediately it turns blue. And again, that's the basic color, right? So one drop of sodium hydroxide immediately increases the pH to go basic. How about the buffer? Well, we know better now, right? So we're not going to do this a milliliter at a time. Well, let's just do, that's about two milliliters. We'll add it. It's still green. Let's add another two milliliters. Because what we want to see is whether it's reasonably effective against both. What we're going to try to do is match that color. Because actually, this was one drop, right? So it's still green. It's kind of a teal green. Notice here when we, were, we started with green and we added some acid, it went to a yellow green, but was still in that transition intermediate neutral range. Here we're going more to the blue green, but it's still neutral. It's, it's not above 7.6 yet. It's yellow below 6. Blue above 7.6, various shades of green in between. So I've already added 5 milliliters. What we want to see is whether it's as effective against both. And again, we're trying to match now this color. So we want to match that blue. It's a teal now, but I'm at 18 milliliters. Let's add some more. We're we going to get there. Pretty much where you can see we're, we're getting very much more blue. Probably won't take much more to get to that blue but let's see if we can match it. We did pretty good matching the yellows here. Let's see how much it takes to get there. So what are we showing here? We're showing basically, basically, that the buffer is equally as effective against acid and base. And you can see I'm still not at the same color blue. And this is sort of my control here, right? So that I see how much, acid, how much base, sodium hydroxide, I have to add to change the pH as much as one drop did to the distilled water. And so far, I've added 13 milliliters. That's pretty good. It's not exactly identical, but it's close. So what you saw is that it, the buffer was equally as effective against acid or base. An ideal buffer is one where you have exactly equal amounts of the weak acid and its conjugate base. I want to give you one sort of schematic drawing that I think summarizes the properties of a buffer. So let's look at the board. And remember I said that a buffer always has a weak acid. We said a weak acid is always HA. And its conjugate base, which is A minus. If you have equal amounts of the acid and its base, conjugate base, then you will have an ideal buffer. The pH of that ideal buffer will be equal to the pKa, 
which is the dissociation constant of HA. So if you have acetic acid, which has a pKa of 4.75, round it out just a bit, okay? And you have an equal amount of sodium, of acetic acid and sodium acetate, the pH of that ideal buffer will be 4.75, okay? What happens here? Well, think of this as a circle, okay? Because what we have are reversible cha cha changes, well, where we can convert the weak acid HA to the conjugate base A minus. What do we add to do that? OH minus, okay? How do we go from A minus to HA? We add H plus, okay? This basically demonstrates why a buffer is effective. That's almost all you need to do. As long as you have both components present, then if you add any H plus, it will react with the A minus. It's going to change the ratio of HA and A minus, but as long as you still have both, you're still going to be within its buffer range, which is usually plus or minus one unit from the pKa. What if you added base? Well, as long as you have HA present, that will react with the OH minus. You get some A minus. As long as you still have both components present, you're going to stay within the pH, one pH unit of that pK unit until at some point you do um, exceed the buffer capacity. What happens then? Well, if we add so much, when we had uh, the buffer, if we added so much acid, what happens? Essentially then we take the A minus, we add so much acid, we convert it all to HA, now we don't have both components present anymore, and that's when that green buffer turned yellow upon the addition of acid. And of course you can do the reverse reasoning for the other. Again, what does the buffer do? A difficult concept, easy enough to illustrate, withstands changes in pH upon the addition of either strong acid or strong base. The important thing is the composition of the buffer and why it works. And if you get into more advanced topics, you can talk about pH equals pKa. You can use the infamous Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. You don't need to. You can build on this. This is your basic framework for understanding buffer chemistry.